um, application, everything that you would be able to see is uploaded probably within the first week. So as soon as we get an application, we put it in. The only thing I, the only caveat I have to say is that any changes, additional, um, for instance, we may look at an application and say, okay, you need this waiver, that waiver, this waiver, and then we start looking at it a little further, and we make them come in and request additional waivers or modify something. That may not get uploaded as quickly, but when we get in our applications, we are putting them into the system within the first week. That's for our planner's sake and also for staff's sake. We have to be able to look at the applications that came in and we have to be able to, you know, from a management standpoint, we have to be able to look at what is being applied for, what our, our staff is working on. So that's why it's in there that quickly. So and it's available to the public. Um, plans? I know the final ones don't, but... No, the pre uh, uh, we're trying to work that out, and Sammy Rial, who is the planning manager for current planning, she's here today, she's been working with our district attorney because the problem is these are stamp plans, which means they are um, copyrighted. So it's very hard for us to put them out to everyone because our district attorney gave us a, an opinion that it is copyrighted, so... Not in any other department. Planning can, okay. not other departments. So they they get hard copies, and you, as any citizen, can come in and look at them. But it's very hard at this point, the way our system is, for us to give you access to that because we're, you would be going behind a firewall that's very protected. So that's the big issue. Can we have the planners then bring copies? Because you mentioned you know, part of, of the big problem in that, the big problem in that um, a lot of times these applicants are not bringing their plans even though they're supposed to be told. It's very hard for us to have the planners consistently bring, there's two problems we have here. One, we have um, enterprise or Spring Valley that may have 20 or 30 plans coming in. So that to be able to keep track of them, to bring in the files, we have to, from a you know open and accessible type um, stance, we have to be able to have them at the county. So it's very hard to require that they bring them in. The other thing to keep in mind, is the planners are not there to present the plans. The planners are there to answer any questions that may come up. It is the applicants, they are required, they are told over and over again. All of the paperwork they've give, been given shows that they have to bring in the plans. It would be in the town board of the CAC's best interest if they, if they forget the plans and hold it. You know, they, they just have to hold it. It's not, you know, it's, how can I put this? We, we work hard to accept, you know, accept the application, get through, do everything. But the applicant, we are not working for the applicant. We are working for the citizens. And the applicant has to prove to you that what they're requesting is what they should have. It's not, so it's up to them. It's their onus. So I, I guess I just want to make sure that we're planning for You guys are 100% definitely telling them Try to get on a piece of paper. This is what you need to bring to the TAB or CAC. Oh, we have it. We not only are we telling them, and we don't write it on a piece of paper. We have a form that says you have to bring A, B, C, D, and it's hand. They have a checklist, and they they are hand, on the checklist. It gives them the dates of where they when they have to go to whichever town board CAC when they have to go to the planning commissioner, or the board of county commissioners. They're given a checklist and what they're supposed to bring to all. Is that a checklist? That I'm not sure. What's that? What's the question? The, check the checklist for um, that the applicants have to bring, and we can give that to you and have so. that uploaded. I don't think it is. Let me make one quick comment. Let me make one quick comment, if I could, about the um, the Tom Bill Resource Manual webpage. We're going to continue to develop this over the next week or so. Okay, so if you go in there, if you go in there Monday, you may not get all the information yet. But hopefully by Friday the 13th. Um, <laughs> maybe not Friday the 13th, let's just say the following Monday, we'll have all the documents and links uploaded. We're going to test them as we've been doing this over the last couple of weeks. Um, so I, just bear with us, but I would say in about a week or so, a little over a week, 
Um, go back in there, take a look at it. You can definitely look at it next week, but just know that there may be some changes coming after that. Okay, I'm sorry for the feedback on this end. We have another question or comment back here, and then I'll bring a microphone up front. Yeah, uh, t two comments. Uh, one, you might consider a link to the county comprehensive plan, which contains the overall goals and policies for the county, including uh, the most recently adopted urban land use uh, policies. And uh, I know for enterprise, we found that quite useful, particularly interpreting some of the staff comments uh, in there. Uh, the other is the gentleman, we've occasionally at enterprise had folks come without plans. You've got two options. One, I get them to agree to come back in two weeks when they've got everything, or two, you can forward it with either denial or no recommendation on it, and part of your uh, motion be that uh, they return request whatever board is above you request their return to the tab when they have complete plans. And David, ha how can I say this? This is not your first rodeo. <laughs> David has been an excellent resource. In fact, uh, David Chestnut do does go to the Board of County Commissioner meetings just to observe and kind of keep an eye on us, but that's good. Um, as does uh, a lot of other CAC TAB members, and we do appreciate that coming to the Planning Commission or the Board of County Commissioners because although the Board of County Commissioners is during the day, it is always, um, it's encouraged, and, and you may not know it, but we do appreciate you being there. We do appreciate you coming and giving the community. Okay, Robert, don't laugh so much, but, <laughs> but am I right? We do. You know, we do appreciate it, so keep that in mind. And I think I'm jumping into Blanca's. <laughs> I have a question that maybe you can answer, which is, are the staff reports available online? It's a little bit frustrating. Sometimes we get those very late, or the one that, that winds up being relevant at our meeting is different from the one that we were sent. That's our, the problem that we have with the staff reports is that a couple of years ago, the um, time frame between TAB and CAC meetings and the Board of County Commissioners or the Planning Commission meetings was extended. So what ends up happening is some of the other agencies end up having a little more time to put in their comments. So you get a staff report that is, that is an initial draft, but then you've got two weeks that things may happen or we may get another plans and that sort of thing. So we hope that what you get is as close to what's going to be put in the agenda for the board or for the um, planning commission but i can't guarantee that because a lot can happen in the in that extended time frame between your review and the actual public hearing the um we post on we don't post online the drafts and again, what you're gonna see is the final, and that's gonna be with the Planning Commissioner, the Board of County Commissioners, the week before the meeting. And I do apologize for that, but it's just a matter of the process. We can't, the, the, um, the way our system works, we are in a, it's a very old system that makes the, the um, agenda sheets. So in order to keep posting them and putting them online, we have to re-merge them and then we have to take them to some place. It just, it, it would, well, actually with our new system, we might be able to, you know, it may be real time, but again, I can't, I just know our system now and I'm not guaranteeing any system in the future. That's, is that a good way to put it? <laughs> so, so now that I've completely taken over this, <laughs> Okay, so I'm Nancy Amundsen. I'm the Director of Comprehensive Planning for Clark County. I've been the Director of Comprehensive Planning since 2010. Just so you know, I'm not from around here. I came to Southern Nevada in 2006, and uh, from Maryland and then to Florida and then to here. Um, I actually love Southern Nevada. I don't think I'll ever wanna leave. I have the resources here are just wonderful. It's a great place to live. And I do care about this community, and sometimes you may not think so. Some people may argue it with me, but I always have your back. I really do appreciate everything you do. I don't mind getting yelled at. I will not believe that, you know, like the little video clip, I'm gonna probably be more like her than 
like the gentlemen in the uniforms. In the back, if she would stand up, is Sammy Rial. She is our planning manager. She's our division chief for current planning. That is the division that deals with your day-to-day -day operations. That's the one that deals with all of the applications that are coming through. She deals with the problems. She deals with the solutions. So Sammy is a great um, resource, and she will do anything she can to help you. I'm talking for you, Sammy, but she will. She will. She's wonderful. She's been with us for a year and a half. She came from San Diego County, actually working for one of your new planning, I mean, one of your new uh, town board members' brother. So we're all one big happy family here in Southern Nevada. Um, so just a little, a little about comprehensive planning. We are not just current planning, and we need you to be involved in not just current planning. So the first two are the easy ones, the advanced planning. That's our future planning. The, um, Commissioner Sisolak calls that the future planners. They're the ones that deal with the land use plans, um, the land use plan updates, the yearly updates. We have right now, I believe, Brian Laughlin uh, kicked off last month, our, the, our, our the land use plan update. First open house, yeah. Yes, had the first open house. <laughs> we have Sunrise Manor will be kicking off within the next month or so, the commissioners would like to have open houses, neighborhood meetings before we officially kick it off. And then later on this year, we're gonna be dealing with Winchester Paradise. So that's this year, but it's constantly morphing. Every five years, we do a comprehensive land use update for each of the town boards and the CACs. In addition, every year, you may see the minor updates, where we either have applications or the Board of County Commissioners directs us to move forward. Um, a lot of you may not see, uh, I think that you can say John and David see a lot of the yearly updates because they're in, although it's probably the fastest growing areas, which is the Southwest, that's when people want to do changes to land use and that sort of thing. So it's always morphing, it's always changing, and you will be seeing our advanced planners, our future planners, when it's time to do your land use update. So that's our first layer. And then the second layer, of course, is current planning, which deals with the day-to-day -day operations, the zone changes, the waivers, the subdivisions, new development, that sort of thing, and that's what you'll see as well. So you, it's two-pronged. You may not constantly see the advanced planners, but you're gonna constantly see some sort of current planning. Then we, we also have economic development. We have a liaison for economic development. He is also our liaison for nuclear waste. So he has a very busy job. And um, he is, economic development in unincorporated Clark County is unique in that we're not fighting with other municipalities for folks to come into Clark County because guess what? If they go into the city, they're in Clark County. So we work more as, our department works more as a liaison, helping people get through the process, pointing them in the right direction, even if that is one of the um, incorporated cities. We have major projects. Um, those are mostly gonna be in Enterprise. That's your Southern Highlands, that's gonna be your Pinnacle Peaks is gone, but um, Mountain's Edge, Rhodes Ranch, that sort of thing, um, as well as we've got Coyote Springs, which is up in the Northeast. So that's our major projects. I mentioned nuclear waste. Um, we also have the Office of Sustainability, which is um, working, it's our advanced planning, working with our current planners, trying to find ways to make things more sustainable right now. We're also working on the Maryland Parkway Corridor, which is, we're looking to create an overlay that makes it um, maybe a transportation-oriented type development. So those of you in that area will be working with our planners in the future. We also have a Brownsfield grant that we're working on to try to find if there's any um, opportunities. I don't, it's not really a good thing to have an opportunity to clean up Brownsfields, but if there, <laughs> If there are areas that are um, borderline, our Brownsville grant would allow us to apply for more grants to help out property owners to clean it up. So 
But that's my spiel. I don't have a PowerPoint. I do apologize, but then again, I tend to shoot from the hip anyway. Anybody that knows me knows that. So, but I'm here for questions. And of course, okay. <laughs> okay. When they're saying planning commission or a PCC meeting, do you or staff uh, go over the whole agenda and uh, say like this this one is uh, could have you know so people on both sides so then would you have uh, the people doing the staff report uh, also report to the uh, county commission before the meeting to highlight them on things it's usually me okay. for the board of county commissioners i have briefings and i go over all of the applications in each of the commissioners districts i don't go over the entire agenda unless there's a contentious item if there's a contentious item i brief every one of the commissioners on that including the commissioner whose district it's in so the board of county commissioners is me the planning commission we have an hour before the meeting starts we do have a briefing for them going over anything if there's something it's kind of um amusing the planning commissioners know if i show up that it's, there's going to be some contentious item on the agenda because I'm just there to protect my staff and, and them and not that I think that the audience is going to be, I just, if there's hard questions, I want to be the one to be able to answer them, if that's a good way to put it. still there, I haven't spoken to him in a while, but every, every, everybody, every, everybody there, when, we, when I have questions on things, I go right to them. When I see the staff report, uh, Phil wrote the last one on those 29 homes, so I, I said, Phil, there's a couple things I don't necessarily understand what you mean in there, and they're, they're really great in you know, answering all questions, so thank, thank you, you on that. So just so you know, Jared is still in the department, however, he's become a future planner. So he's dealing with our um, Maryland Parkway overlay, overlay. He's also dealing with, just so you know, we work very closely with RTC. We're working on the pedestrian and um, bicycle um, plan, the study. I see that Teresa knows. <laughs> Teresa and I know each other, not through planning, but because we walk our dogs in the morning at the same time over at, out at Lone Mountain. So, so I guess I don't know if that's a conflict or not. I'm not sure. <laughs> The dogs like each other, or at least they don't dislike each other. That's about the best way to put it, so when it comes to dogs. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Um, I thought that was determined when you send a planner to what, how do you determine when you're going to send one of uh, your planners to our meetings and when they don't? Because I've been trying to figure out what the rhyme or reason is, and I haven't figured it out. I'm pointing at Sammy because she's in charge of that. <laughs> and I, you know, from my perspective, I would like planners to go whenever there's going to be something that's going to be technical or there, there's some meetings they always go to. They always go to Enterprise. They always go to Spring Valley. We have someone at Laughlin all the time, um, mainly because those are the, the, those are the um, areas that get slammed. So it, it's probably the best way to put it. So, but I'll let Sammy talk. So the planners are generally assigned a, as on a rotational basis. Um, we have the planners at the beginning of the year. We have the town board calendar, and we just say these planners are going on these dates. Uh, we have a number of planners that have, uh, we'll say, a week off. So again, they don't have to go for every town board. They may have one or two weeks off in between the, the rotation schedules. But in, in reality, there really is no rhyme or reason. We try to make sure that the planners get out to all the town boards. As Nancy just said, when we do have some contentious items or maybe some complicated projects, we might switch around a town board member so they can go and speak on their item and be there to support that item uh, because the other staff member may not be as versed as the staff person who talked with the applicant, worked with the applicant, has been talking to you know the involved neighbors and anybody else who has been interested on the project. Um, and in some cases, if we have complicated projects that are what we call you know, outside 
the valley, then we may send a planner out there as well. But for the most part, we only have a limited number of planners, so we can go to you know only a limited number of town boards in any given week, but we try to keep them uh, within the valley with the exceptions, as I just said. And, and what you will see, I want to follow up on that. One, what you will see, you will see planners, generally advanced planners, or um, we have some code writers that are under Sammy, so she may go. If we have code updates, the sign code, for instance, we went to the, all of the um, town board CACs just to kind of give an, a brief update of what we were looking at and, and the changes that we were presenting to get some feedback. So, yes. If we have an issue that we think is going to be, I, I'm not sure we've ever seen a, a planner out at the Red Rock Advisory Council, but if we have an issue that we think is going to be contentious, could we request a planner? Absolutely, to yes. Okay. Yes, John. You triggered a question I've been meaning to ask oh, you <laughs> uh, when you mentioned RTC. Mm -hmm. RTC is putting up new bus shelters around and so on, which they proudly decorate with bus, which is big, ugly signs. And we don't seem to have any say. It's not requested. Um, we just know that there's a bus turnout, and suddenly there's a billboard uh, in an area that's otherwise residential or otherwise not so cluttered with signage. We, um, that's, it's becoming more and more of an issue as they are, uh, I guess they call it modernizing the, uh, the bus shelters and adding not just, not just billboards, but billboards that are illuminated and cast light off onto the off and, and all of that, things that we would otherwise have hearings about and make recommendations that would go from us to the PC to the BCC. And instead, they just appear. Uh, is that something that can be addressed? Um, probably not, for two reasons. Number one, it's in the right of way. So um, if it's in the right of way, we don't bring it to the town board because it beco doesn't become a planning issue. We don't dictate what's permitted by right in the right of way. The other thing to remember is NRS was changed a number of years ago to allow RTC to advertise on bus shelters. So they're not considered billboards because NRS was changed to allow it because it's in the right of way. It, you know, and I, and, and I understand what you're saying, but maybe Sue can also address it because she's really involved with RTC as well. Okay. I am, and I, I have a thought. Um, my commissioner is chair of Regional Transportation Commission, so I work with her staff a lot. Any of the more seasoned town board members re may remember Ellen Marcial who used to work with town boards, she's actually the supervisor over bus shelters at the RTC. So what I'd like to do is talk to her on Monday and see if we, if we couldn't work a process out for certain areas to bring it to the attention of the town board, see, what, see how open she is to that. So let me get back to you on that. Anyone else? Wow, this is a tame crew. <laughs> That's right, that's right. Now, I, I just want to welcome you all. I want to thank you all for being involved because you may not always agree with the recommendations that our planners make. I can tell you there's a lot of times I may not agree with the rec, but, but they are looking at applications based on the code and what makes sense and whether it's consistent and that sort of thing. They're, they're looking at the law, shall we say. And they're looking at what's in the area and what's been approved and that sort of thing. So always remember, we do appreciate you giving us comments. And we do appreciate you giving us suggestions because we're looking at it from a, I don't want to say, um, we're, we're looking at it from a very, maybe not a narrow perspective, but a perspective that's more technical. And you all have your hearts in your neighborhood. So we do appreciate your, your input. And I'll be honest with you, and I think maybe some folks that have worked with us will agree. There's times we make a recommendation, the town board is completely against us, one way or the other, because I've been surprised. Some of the town boards have recommended approval when we've recommended denial. So, um, but, and the Board of County Commissioners does go with the town board recommendation because they do understand what the neighborhood needs and wants, maybe more than we do. So just, I thank you all and I thank you for your input.